La protagonista de la siguiente ponencia es Margot de Klen, asesora senior de Política de Suelos y Aguas del Ministerio Neerlandés de Infraestructuras y Gestión del Agua. En su país, los Países Bajos, Margot formó parte del grupo que lideró la iniciativa social para el uso consciente del suelo, en la que participó en actividades de sensibilización y capacitación. Ha participado además en la redacción de varios artículos sobre el suelo como base de los retos sociales. Ha promovido una investigación sobre cómo dar voz a los suelos en la toma de decisiones y la planificación y recientemente ha publicado un Green Paper sobre la urgencia de la necesidad de dar a los suelos su papel. Con ustedes, Margot de Klen. So uh, first I'd like to, uh, well, thank you for being here and also the organization, of course, for inviting me to share some of the ideas uh, we developed uh, with a lot of people uh, around us in the Netherlands, but also within the, within the international network. I want to talk about uh, what we uh, should do and how we can act to uh, cope with all the threats we are um, meeting uh, around us. And uh, I'll uh, want to, to talk with you about what we can do ourselves and what we can do within our communities and uh, organizations. And um, I'd like to start with, uh, well, actually, um, uh, what's also said by Anna Maria, that uh, we are living in uh, with soils which are very precious and very uh, vulnerable also, but at the same time we should realize that healthy soils are also the pillar actually for societal challenges we uh, have to cope with. Like uh, soils are very important to cope with the biodiversity crisis, but also uh, if we want to change into a circular society, soils are at the core of achieving that. But also to fight pollution, we need soils because soils also have the capability to degrade pollution. He uh, healthy soils, of course, are also very important to fight uh, climate change. Uh, they help us to mitigate what we are already doing, but they also uh, help us in adapting to um, face effects which we cannot turn back anymore. So healthy soils are important, but we are far away from healthy soils. At least in, the, in Europe, we are facing uh, soil degradation in a very, very severe form. Already 60 to 70 percent of our valuable soils are degraded, and uh, it's done by erosion and compaction, by uh, salinization, but also, of course, by human inflicted contamination and uh, desertification, and also land take and sealing of soils in our cities and in our gardens are um, not helping um, to give soils the space to help us attack our. Uh, needs and also our social challenges. So what should be uh, done? When you see what's happening around us, we see that more and more there's a need for healthy soils. We see uh, societal and uh, policy transformations we need to undertake because we cannot keep on uh, going the way we are doing now. Something really has got to change. And in the, uh, to make that uh, possible, we need the ecosystem services of our soil and natural system. The pressure on land is growing and growing. We are getting more and more people on this planet. They need food, they need drinking water, they need room for housing, all pressures on soil. There's uh, a connection between environmental policies and spatial planning. So also a need to understand the system and where we can build, where we can have uh, agriculture and where we can build on uh, our circular, circular economy. And also uh, there's uh, at this moment still a lack of holistic policy. It's all very sectorial. We uh, look at water or we look at spatial planning or housing. We look at uh, economical uh, development, but we do not consider it in a holistic way. Europe has started with a very ambitious plan and that could make a change for us all with the Green Deal for Europe. In this uh, picture you can also see where 
soil is connected to a lot of those goals we strive for within Europe and also with the ambition for a, a soil strategy for Europe and a soil monitoring law, first steps are taken towards coping with our precious soil and, um, well, uh, making a future for our kids. So what I said, if you want to do something, we cannot go on the way we're doing now. A paradigm shift is really needed. We need to stop only to look at protection, but we need uh, to go towards healthy soils contributing not only to our financial uh, system, but to welfare, prosperity, and the environment as a whole. Uh, we have to watch differently, think differently, and act differently, because that's really essential. And we have to realize that um, the, uh, the, the, the sustainable development goals, which also um, are divided in an economical, societal, and biosphere, um, have to be in balance in a way. It's not only economy, it's not only natural system, but it's a balance of both, and how are we going to cope with that? Because it's also a very um, hard thing to do, because the economical sphere is only a very short-term sphere, sphere. It's four-year sphere, while the societal sphere is more, um, more of a 10-year sphere, and the biosphere is a very long-term sphere. We have been uh, having the lecture of Anna Maria who showed how many years this biosphere uh, takes to um, be formed. So to mix, to get a balance in those, it also asks something about how we regard as a whole system. Um, it means we have to watch differently and how are we going to watch differently at our uh, challenges. Well, uh, as I said, soils are, have a value. They, uh, ha they stand for welfare, prosperity, and, and the environment. And that means also no passing on of action. So no passing on to future generations, no passing on to other countries or other regions or other um, aspects. It also means that you have to look at the value, not only value in money, but the, val the intrinsic value of soils for biodiversity and also the societal value, and that's different than only looking in senses of man money. So we have to look at the living soil and the ecosystem services and the value that offers for planet, for people. And um, another aspect is that, that you do not look at certain compartments, but at, at the system as a whole. And as I already said, it's meant to be long term. And uh, what I did not mention is that you should not look at only a spot, but at an area. Because if you look in an area, a wider region, then you have a lot of options for uh, solutions and you create more possibilities. And I, show, I, I will show something of that. I want to um, show something of a case we had in the Netherlands. We do not have such a nice mountains as you have. We live actually in a sand pit, uh, uh, a moor. It's uh, not very attractive for some people, but it's also got very special values. And I want to tell you about some artificial isles we made in uh, one of the lakes, the big uh, um, fresh water lakes we have in the Netherlands. Uh, we were facing uh, uh, some problems there, which were caused by the closure of this uh, lake, which used to be a former uh, interior sea. And um, due to this closure, all the sediments were kept actually in this lake. And well, I didn't know, but it turned out that that became a real problem because we had very very thick layers of Holocene uh, sediments in this lake, and therefore the water quality of this lake was so bad that no life could take place in that lake. And we, th that also led to a poor state of the water and also, of course, of the, e the ecological equal, um, quality. And we wanted to change that. And how were we going to do that? And we find, found a way we wanted to improve the water quality, but we wanted more. We want to look at the whole lake and uh, also its use for the whole environment. We wanted to develop a paradise for birds. We wanted a new nature reserve because the Netherlands is a very small country with uh, 
uh, not a lot of space, so we were always looking for space also for other um, um, well options. And uh, we also wanted to learn about uh, can those sediments be used in another way, maybe as building materials, and how are we going to do that? And we did that by repur repurposing the sediment from this lake as a substrate for artificial islands. And we did not do that alone. We had a huge collaboration of parties which had all interests in one way or another in this project. So it was a, co a collaboration of uh, nature cons uh, conservation uh, organization, the provinces, the, um, the ministry, uh, research institutes, but also, of course, the constructors and consulting engineers. And we also had the National Lottery, which was paying a lot of money and also showing this pro project to the whole public, which was also kind of awareness building. So we did it, and already after two years, it turned out to be really a paradise for birds. We have now a lot of colonies already living there, and the, even from the rare spaces. So this was really very successful to look at a broader scope to start at what uh, this, how the system is how the system is working, and what kind of interest can uh, the ecosystem services su supply for humanity, but also, of course, for um, wildlife itself. If you want to change something, you also have to think differently. And um, thinking differently and uh, making new steps towards a new system where you put values at, uh, at the core, you also, that means that you are going into a transition. And transitions are not very comfortable because all kinds of activities are happening and people feel not secure. Some people want to stick to the, to the current system and do everything with innovations and so on to um, improve the current situations. And others are trying and experimenting with new ways of uh, facing problems. And if you want to change something, you have to think differently and recognize where you are yourself within this transformation process and also where other parties are in this, pro this process so you can also communicate in a good way. It's good to start with the societal challenges because everybody recognizes these challenges and that's a way of communicating. And also, you should not stick within your own pillar or silo, but you should go out and look in a holistic way because also when you look at a broader area, when you look at more disciplines, you also find more options. And um, important is to realize that you should start with the soil sediment water system. The natural system is the basis for new spatial development plans. And um, this also asks for different ways of financing. It's not about financing uh, as such, but it's actually ab ab about recognizing values of what you want to achieve. And therefore, you should find new models which start at values. And um, this also gives the possibility to involve stakeholders and um, share responsibilities and also joint benefits. And um, important is that's not uh, a one-year project. These are processes which will take years, so you also need long-term involvement. I want to give an example of a project I'm working on. It's uh, uh, using clay to make farmland climate proof. It started with uh, it's a, um, a, a project together with the province of uh, Gelderland, our own um, organization, uh, the executive office of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Man Management, a lot of farmers, and also with uh, or with uh, funding from the European Commission, and uh, we wanted to improve. Um, we wanted to work in this project because uh, it's not only that we wanted to improve um, soil fertility for farmers, but also that uh, as a company uh, or as an organization, we are the biggest earth movers in the Netherlands. We have lots and lots of soil coming from our infrastructural works, uh, our dikes, our pro projects with room for the river. So all this soil now is just 
considered as waste, why it's very valuable material, actually, which we would like to use in a circular way. The province of Gelderland, they are interested, the value for them is that they want to have their land climate-proof and uh, resilient for drafts, and I'll explain that further. Because um, what's happening, we have uh, sandy soils in the Netherlands. Uh, they are part of the European sand belt. Um, they, are, they have a very low water holding capacity. Uh, nutrients and pesticides are leaching from these grounds very, very easily because nothing is uh, holding it. Um, they are very sensitive to drafts and uh, climate change, of course, because of these uh, characteristics. And uh, the, by intensive use, agricultural use, um, the organic matter content in those soils has more or less disappeared. And uh, we wanted to do something because of climate change and the very hot summers. Now we experience really drought and farmers see a reduction of products. And also uh, we see that they are using a lot of groundwater to spray their fields. And um, well, and the groundwater also, which is also used for drinking water, gets polluted with all their nutrients. So what, ca what did we do? We tried uh, we adding small layers of clay, just uh, um, as you have normally with a, a river overflowing uh, the river basin, where small particles of sediment are um, well left behind, and thus they um, contribute to soil fertility. So we wanted to use that kind of system by uh, adding small layers of clay. And then uh, we uh, hoped that it would help uh, to increase the infiltration of uh, um, uh, nutrients and, uh, and uh, to increase the, in, uh, the uh, water retention capacity. capacity. Uh, we wanted um, the minerals which were added to uh, hold uh, better or soil organic ca carbon, hence uh, leading to a higher production for farmers, improving carbon sequestration and thus adding to climate uh, mitigation, but also to healthier soil life and thus more resilience of soils for um, products uh, or um, for crops. And uh, we also see that this is a long-term improvement instead of a, a short-term improvement because the minerals stay in the soil and thus <coughs> stay giving these uh, uh, services. Um, I have some visuals here from the land uh, where we already, which we already treated with some of those uh, clay layers and you can already see after uh, two gifts of uh, small clay, you see that there uh, in the picture there that the, the, how the clay is put on the fields and you see already that it works, that you have a better yield and uh, at this moment we are also monitoring whether the other effects we are striving for are also working. Well, so we've been watching differently and thinking differently, but of course we also have to act differently. So uh, we need the soil sediment water system steering in our decision making and in our spatial planning. We need co-creation with stakeholders. We need to connect urban and uh, rural natural landscapes, but also, as I already said, we need other uh, business uh, models. So we need to work top down, but also bottom up. And um, we have to upscale for multiple use, not only one single use, but multiple use. So also your uh, regional environment, your rural environment can contribute to climate change, to uh, water um, security, to food security, it, and to more biodiversity instead of only being seen as producing for uh, food. Uh, of course, we also need to monitor whether our efforts are working, whether our uh, measure, measures we take are working. And this should be done by everybody, actually. You can also contribute. It's 
not only um, public authorities which should take the lead, but also industries, small and medium enterprises, but also citizens can contribute uh, with monitoring uh, by counting soil animals or uh, birds or whatever. So you can all help to understand the system in your environment. And, uh, well, it's also a kind of a matter of land stewardship. We should all be kind of stu stewards of our environment uh, within your work, but m maybe also just at home. And uh, a land stewardship also adds to joint benefits, but also joint responsibilities. Uh, a last example I want to share with you is the Utrecht bio-washing machine. It's also a, it's an Interreg project uh, with where my city uh, also cooperated. We uh, wanted to change, um, well, we wanted to build houses in the inner city and we had to, uh, had a lot of um, soil contamination there and we thought, how are we going to cope with this uh, soil contamination? Well, I've been, uh, having uh, walks here around in Bilbao, and I also realized that a lot of con contamination also here has been uh, coped with by co collaboration with different parties and also finding uh, new concepts of giving value to the whole city by cleaning up your uh, environment. Here we uh, also did something. We uh, said, okay, we wanted to, we are not going to look at um, singular uh, contaminations. We look at the whole area. We uh, look at a whole, not only uh, one system, we look at the whole groundwater system, what's happening there, and we are going to take advantage of what's happening in the groundwater, and we mix it with uh, the energy we want to use or want to produce for the new housing system. So we started uh, a project where uh, we have an ATA system installed where uh, heat is stored in summertime and uh, cold, cold is stored in wintertime. So we got a flow where we add some nutrients and bacteria just help us to eat away the, um, um, the contamination during a long-term uh, period which is constantly monitored. And this makes it able to start a new uh, housing uh, project there. So it was an area-oriented appro uh, approach with the soil groundwater system as a starting point in co-creation with a lot of, uh, mul um, mod of, m lot of stakeholders like the inhabitants, spatial planners, but also the developers, the go uh, governance, and uh, finan financing, of course, was very important, but also technical uh, support and uh, well, new legislation, because it was not uh, already set, uh, or it was not already a part of our normal juridical pr pr uh, procedures to look at the whole area and not at only one plume. But we, uh, it, it's, uh, we did it, it's working, and we're now uh, having uh, more and more buildings for housing on this uh, spot, which we could not use before. So, if you want to change something uh, that's possible and you have to try and uh, bring parties together. So you can, uh, if you only look at, you, you have to bring back cost to uh, looking at values. And how can you do that? Well, in an, uh, if you combine it, you can say you have to show the value of a healthy soil serve, uh, uh, of a hel healthy natural system for prosperity of all. You have, therefore, to connect the soil sediment water system with the societal challenges. Um, therefore, you need a long-term vision because it cannot be done only uh, in a short uh, term. And you, therefore, you need long-term involvement, involvement and long-term financing and monitoring. You have to connect stakeholders with a shared responsibility, upscale to an area approach, and make the soil system what a soil sediment water system, the natural system, steering in your decision making and planning. And when you do that, uh, well, you can work on a new future. And I want to share at last with you my personal motto that if you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. 
and I'd like to thank you for your attention.